What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today I have a super good match. Uh, this one is using a brand new team that I came up with. Uh, it's got a lot of original Pokemon on here that I used to use many years ago. <laughs> a lot of you probably recognize some of these. Uh, while we're on the topic, actually leave a comment. Let me know how long you've been watching my channel. I've been seeing a lot of comments from people who have been subbed for like, you know, 10 years and over, which is insane to me. Seeing a lot of, uh, seeing a lot of familiar people in there. But anyway, uh, opponent is working with, you know, a pretty scary team, but it's actually kind of out of the ordinary, which, you know, we love to see. Um, so, I'm actually going to end up leading off with my Lantern. I wasn't really sure what they were going to want to uh, toss out for a lead. Roserade did seem like the most uh, common lead, but um, I'm just going to go with Lantern, just so I can get a little bit of a pivot action. Plus, this actually isn't that bad for me. If it's going to be a lead Roserade, I'm thinking uh, he's probably just going to go ahead and set up Toxic Spikes. Um, hopefully not sleep powder, but he actually does end up going for the toxic spikes here I'm thinking to myself, you know, what's you know, what would be nice for me right now a nice paralyzed flower I end up missing the thunder wave. I honestly I sit here for a second because I like forgot that thunder wave could miss It's like a 5% chance and just fuck me, right? So <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I'm determined I'm gonna end up going for it again as they actually go for the leech seed Which is totally fine lantern does not you know really want to stay in here for too long. I could kind of, you know, put some pressure on it with Ice Beam, but I would prefer to kind of conserve Lantern to get some good pivots later, potentially uh, paralyze some fast things that they have, like the Crobat, um, the Yanmega. Overall, Floating Fish, you're, you're staying with me, buddy. Also, look at how high Lantern floats above the ground. Thing needs Levitate, I'm telling you. Like six feet high up there. <laughs> anyway, I go for the Volt Switch here, and looking at my squad, the obvious answer for this thing is going to be um, the Metacham, I could bring Metacham in, easily kill it with a, uh, with a Zen head, but I figure they have stuff like the Cresselia around, and I'm like, you know what, this might be, this might be your time, Pinhead Larry. I, br I bring in the Masquerain, I get a little bit of an Intimidate, just for absolutely no reason at all, and they actually show me that they have the Aromatherapy, which is hilarious because I was losing sleep over that damn Thunder Wave, and they ended up just, you know, smelling some flowers and getting rid of it anyway, so <laughs> that's kind of annoying. Um, I'm gonna go for a quiver dance here. I'm like, you know what, Pinhead, just, just, just dance your little heart out here, buddy. We're gonna, we're gonna try to get a sweep going with, uh, with Masquerade, which would be amazing. They end up actually switching into Crobat. Crobat comes in. He's just trying to dry his wings off because it looks like he dipped it in some, uh, some baby food. So, like, honestly, what's up with the green color? It's gross. Anyway, um, I'm thinking to myself, I really, you know, I can't do much unless I get like an air slash flinch here. Um, so potentially maybe I keep Pinhead in the back pocket. I am gonna end up switching out here um, I figure it, it was worth a try setting that thing up because if they didn't go Crobat uh, I could have made some stuff happen But this actually kind of opens up a good opportunity for me to bring in the Sand Slash for a couple different reasons uh, One being I'm relatively defensive. I'm actually max HP and attack So I'm not all out defensive, but I know that I can take at least two Brave Birds uh, so I come in, I take that, um, I take that poison from the freaking toxic Legos they laid out a minute ago, and I'm trying to make it so nobody else has to deal with that, because nobody likes stepping on Legos, especially if they're, you know, dipped in poison. So, um, I want to be able to get a rapid spin off here. I know that they have the ghost type in the, um, in the Dusk Noir here, so I'm actually expecting a switch into the Dusk Noir to try to spin block me, so I'm going to go for Stealth Rock of my own. Stealth Rock is great for my... Uh, my, my situation here just because of the fact that they do have the Yan Mega takes 50% from that on switch in um, the, the Crobat later switching in on that is not going to enjoy it too much. So that's actually great I am able to get up those rocks and it doesn't look like they actually have uh, reliable um, Hazard control unless it's you know defog Crobat or something like that So I get up my stealth cocks all in all pretty nice now the issue at hand here is a <laughs> A freaking uh, Kecleon, which is actually a, a really cool Pokemon. Shout out to shout out to my opponent for rocking the Kecleon. Um, I am going to go for the Rapid Spin here. It is kind of important that I do get this Rapid Spin off. Plus, I know if they're going to be bringing in Kecleon, it's probably going to try to uh, set up. So I'm not really too worried about uh, Dustinor coming in and blocking me. So they actually end up going for the Fake Out there. That is annoying. Sand Jobs is like, what the fuck, man? I'm just over here trying to, you know, just trying to do a little spin a -roo. Just just minding my own business. And then, uh, and then a chameleon kind of came in and just slapped me. So um, I'm thinking I might be able to actually, I'm pretty sure I actually outspeed. So I do want to be able to get this rapid spin off. I do go first, um, give him a little twirly do, and that does take care of the, uh, the toxic spikes. Now, it's kind of unfortunate that, of course, the Roserade is still alive and not paralyzed. So it could potentially set back up the toxic spikes later, and that would be a real boner kill. So 
Uh, they actually end up going for the power-up punch, which you do expect to see from Kecleon. Kecleon's an interesting matchup as well, because he could have gone for the Shadow Snake, which would have turned it to Ghost type, blocked my Rapid Spin, and I would have just been absolutely dunked on, but it was worth it for me to just go for the Rapid Spin anyway. I didn't really have much to lose. So now this thing's sitting at plus one attack, uh, and I know Kecleon pretty well. I mean, there's a lot of things that this thing can do, uh, but for the most part, I kind of know what to expect here. Um, I go into Metacharm. The reason being is because I know I can take one Shadow Sneak, and if they do go for the Shadow Sneak, I should likely be able to kill with the Zen Headbutt anyway. Uh, I do take the Shadow Sneak just barely, and uh, Nipple Knee over here is going to just show off his nice little nipples on his knees, and I go for the Zen Headbutt. It actually, it actually lives, uh, which does suck. So, um, it was worth it for me to go into Metacham there because had they not gone for Shadow Sneak or didn't have it, it would have been still fighting type from the power up punch and just died anyway. But I know that I need to conserve the, the Metacham. Metacham is the star of the show here today. I know that looking at the team matchup, uh, Metacham does extremely well on their team as long as the Cresselia is taken care of. So, uh, I'm able to switch in Tauros here as they go for the Shadow Sneak. Uh, it's kind of the obvious play going for the, sh the Shadow Sneak there to take out Metacham. Obviously, Lime coming in here being normal type as hell. He's like, what, what happened? So, now I'm looking at my moves here. I honestly opt to go for the Ice Beam, and that's because I don't want to get that 10% miss chance on Rock Climb. If they had switched into something like potentially the Cresselia, that would have been annoying. Um, but I go for the Ice Beam there just for the basically just the guaranteed kill. They, I figured they probably weren't going to conserve a Kecleon without low health, so it was worth it. Anyway, in comes the Moon Duck, and all my homies hate Cresselia. Honestly, they're probably one of the most annoying Pokemon to play against, literally for the past, like, 10 years. <laughs> um, but, I'm gonna conserve Tauros because, you know, this thing hits like a damn truck, and he's freaking, he's a lime, so you gotta, you gotta keep that guy in the back pocket. I'm gonna go into Frostlass here because I was initially expecting this thing to actually start setting up some Calm Mines. If I know Cresselia like I think I do, this asshole pretty much just sets up Calm Mines, goes for Moonlight, um, and generally just kind of is a menace. So I figured if I was able to get in Frostlass, potentially get up a taunt, uh, and kind of nip that thing in the bud before it gets too, you know, fucking powerful. But, uh, it actually went for an Ice Beam there in on the Switch, and that's actually fine. Ice Thought over here uh, enjoys that, you know, they make, making her feel at home. By the way, Ice Thought is, in fact, Frostitute's uh, long-lost cousin. So, uh, I, d I decide, I'm going to actually go for the Shadow Ball. I potentially thought about going for the Taunt in case this thing tries to get... Uh, tricky and sets up some calm mines, but I feel like the shadow ball is the safest option for me Because honestly looking at my looking at this general matchup Cresselia is kind of the big wall in the way of uh, Me and victory, so I'm just gonna try to weaken this thing as much as possible And if I end up having to lose Frostlast to this matchup, that's actually fine As long as I'm able to whittle this thing down to the point where potentially like Tauros can come in kill it with a rock climb uh, You know or something like that. So I go for the couple shadow balls here and I actually end up getting a special defense drop, which is amazing, as uh, she is going to go for the Moonlight. So, soaks up some of those sweet, sweet Moon Rays, but with that, uh, with that special defense drop, um, it's not going to be super helpful. It's kind, of a, it's kind of a risky maneuver going for healing moves against, uh, against Shadow Balls, because eventually you're going to get that special defense drop. So, Frostlass is, of course, just going to continue to huck some balls at this thing's face. I really, really just need this thing out of the way, and then uh, we're good. So, um, I'm able to knock it down to red. goes for another Psychic. I do live that, and Frostlass is out here just proven to be more bulky than I expected. I Honestly, not a Pokemon that I use often. Uh, this thing works really well in a lot of OU matches. It's actually kind of an anti-lead with Taunt. Um, it, 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 it's, a, it's a great Pokemon. I'm actually enjoying using this thing. Uh, anyway, they're going to end up switching out the Cresselia here and going into the Crobat, which is an interesting play, as I decided to go for the Spikes. I'm like, you know what? Cr Cresselia was in range for anything else on my team to take it out anyway, so I don't really benefit from knocking it out at that point, because then they can just obviously bring in something faster and kill me. So I figure I'd get something out of it, go for the Spikes, and that's actually nice, because now I've got a layer of Spikes, I got the Stealth Rock, and it's really going to kind of uh, punish switches at this point, so... That's amazing. Crobat comes in, and I'm just going to let this thing go down. Uh, Frostlass doesn't really have much of a use at this point. I got the spikes up. Unfortunately, Cresselia, of course, is levitating, and so it won't die on switching in, but that's, that's fine. So, Frostlass goes down. The good news about that is I'm able to bring in a free switch, and in comes the Nipple Knee, the absolute massive fucking legend. He's like, you know what I keep, you know what I keep in these leg sacks of mine? Pure, pure just power and adrenaline. 
<laughs> um, so I am actually faster than Crobat with my Choice Scarf here. I'm going for the Zen Head, but I'm thinking, do I go for it and risk the miss? Honestly, the, the turn one Thunder Wave miss just really got in my head. <laughs> I go for the Zen Head, but here I do outspeed, I do connect, and that is going to be a dead bat. So, a very fast Pokemon out of the way. Crobat is always scary, and it's nice to see old, uh, old baby throw up wings out of the way. Uh, now is a little bit of an interesting kind of sequence here. They bring in the Yan Mega. Yan Mega comes into just getting absolutely destroyed by the Stealth Rock, which is nice. Bug flying type, shout out to you. Um, but my thought process here is this. Generally, from the Yan Megas that I'm used to seeing, are going to be running speed boost. So I'm expecting them to go for the detect here. After one speed boost, Yan Mega actually outspeeds Metacham, and Metacham is way too useful for me uh, to just throw away like that. So I end up switching into Yellow Balls as they show me they just go right for the Giga Drain, get all that health back. He said, oh, you thought your Stealth Rock did something? I doubt it, bitch. Um, and that's <laughs> really kind of a misplay on my end, but it was really not worth it for me to stay in there either way. Um, so Yellow Ball is obviously just going to go down to another Giga Drain here. We do not see the, uh, the Speed Boost ability, which generally, you know, of course, I think it's actually more popular nowadays uh, for people to be running the Tinted Lens Yen Mega, which... Actually, is, to be fair, you know, pretty powerful. Plus, Yan Mega is generally super speedy anyway. But um, that takes care of the Lantern, and you hate to see him go down like that. He's a legend, but, you know, it is what it is. So, now I'm just going to bring back in Tauros. I know that I can take at least one attack from this thing, especially since um, I haven't taken any Stealth Rock damage. Shout out to Sand Jobs from the Dead. Um, but I go for the Rock Climb here. They are going to end up switching into the Dusk Noir, which I was worried about. I considered clicking something else. Um, but honestly, it's kind of just the safest option here. Dustnor comes in looking extra floaty these days. Every Why are every Pokemon that floats are, is so high off the ground? I truly don't understand it. It's, it throws me off. Um, but I go for the Rock Climb there. Obviously, you know, he, he'd be ghosty and stuff with his ghostly tail over there. And um, I'm in kind of a bad situation here. But if I know anything about Dusknor, which I feel like I know quite a bit, is that he's definitely going to click Will-O-Wisp here. And I'm like, Pinhead! Get your ass in there, buddy. It's finally your time. This is this is literally your moment. So I come in. Uh, I'm able to get the Intimidate. Doesn't matter a whole lot. Dusknoir uh, is generally not much of an offensive threat. It's generally just going to be uh, more supportive and kind of just a wall. So I come in on the Will-O-Wisp. Obviously, Masquerade does not give two shits about being burnt because I am a special attacker. And now it, I, this potentially could end up pretty well for me, depending on, on what type of uh, Dusknoir this is. Um, I'm just gonna go for the Quiver Dance here. I'm like, you can, you can do it, buddy. Pinhead, you were, your head's looking extra sharp. You're looking, you're looking good dancing around over there. So that's amazing for me. Uh, I get that plus one in uh, special attack, speed, and special defense. They show me they're actually pain splits. They expected uh, just the attack there, which is fine. Um, I actually like using this Masquerade set because what's more popular these days, what the, what all the, the hip kids are doing is, uh, for the most part, just sticky web kind of lead. So I feel like not a lot of people. Um, are gonna expect the set that I'm working with, but uh, I'm actually gonna dance again And I know that this is kind of my only chance to get a masquerade sweep going Potentially if I can get two quiver dances up and then one air slash flinch I could make the sweep happen. So They show me that they're actually gonna be nightshade uh, For their damaging move, which is totally fine by me Pinhead of course is not the most you know bulky lad So he appreciates the fixed damage move and I'm sitting at just the right amount of HP uh, to the point where I can make something happen here. I got two quiver dances. We're danced up. We're looking nice I'm gonna go for the air slash here. It's of course not gonna kill But if I can get a flinch here if I can just get one flinch I can make the masquerade sweep happen um, and It doesn't flinch of, of course <laughs> it goes for the nightshade there um, And that will take care of me after the burn damage which sucks because the will-o-wisp did actually end up You know coming to bite me in the ass because if I if that will-o-wisp willow missed then that would have been nice, because I could have at least taken out the Dust Noir. But what Masquerade did do is actually put this thing in range to the point where um, it is easily killable. Because Dust Noir is a pretty bulky fella, and I, I needed some chip damage off on that thing before I could make anything happen. Um, I do need to go into old Nipple Knee here. Old Reliable is what we're going to start calling this fella. Huge power, huge nips, either, either or. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go for the Zen Headbutt here. It's looking like it is in range, I think. Then Headbutt does about a little over 50% to this thing. They're going to go for the Protect. They say, hold on a second there, Cowboy. I'm going to get a, just take another bite of this apple and uh, enjoy some more Leftovers Recovery. But it is still, luckily for me, in range for um, another Zen Headbutt kill. So, 
I'm actually still concerned about clicking Zen Headbutt because of the fact that it can miss. But I do connect, I go for that, and it's gonna take care of the Dusknoir. So, big obstacle out of the way. And now, you guessed it, Metacham is looking great in the rest of this matchup. I may not have a lot of health, but Metacham does not need health. He's got his, he's got his big fat legs and in, in, in hope. That's truly all you need in life. So, Cresselia comes in, takes the Stealth Rock, uh, as Zen Headbutt is luckily in range to take care of this thing. And boy, is it satisfying to see Metacham kill a Crest. It's just not something you see every day, so that's amazing. And the final two Pokemon are actually going to be the Yanmega and the Roserade. Yanmega comes in, obviously just gets absolutely demolished by some Stealth Rock. And we do know, of course, with previous misplays with the, the Lantern, rest in peace, that this thing is not going to be Speed Boost, so I don't have anything to worry about. All I got to do is just hit him with my forehead. Seems kind of ridiculous to be using my, my little head to hurt things when I have these big meaty legs over here. But we don't give a shit. In comes the Roserade, the very last Pokemon. And of course, this thing being, you know, poison type and I'm just huge power as shit, it is going to uh, go down to a Zen Headbutt again. And I'll tell you what, I have faith in Zen Headbutt once again because I actually didn't miss any of that match. So that's amazing. Also, I will have you know that Metacham actually killed five of the six Pokemon in this match. And this thing is an absolute threat. Do not sleep on my boy Metacham. Huge power will, uh, will eat your babies. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching that. I know that was a longer match, but I thought it was a pretty good battle. Um, it really tr shows the worth of conserving and win condition, <laughs> to be honest. But hit that like button if you're somehow still listening, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.